lot of friends started asking me about snow leopard and I said no I was not lucky enough but it happens it's nature we have to take what we get Like every other child, my childhood was also curious. I was curious about the flora and fauna around me. I wanted to observe birds, butterflies, insects and spiders around me. And in 2013, I left Allen to become a full-time photographer. I spoke to one of my friends, Ankit Mauchi. We did all our market research and we started a company called 50mm Media Productions. And luckily, from the last 8 years, we have been successfully running this company and balancing our life as a commercial photographer and my wildlife photography as well. As soon as I left Allen and started 50mm media production, I was starving to go to Himalayas to capture the animals and birds out there. So I remember planning a road trip in August 2013 with a couple of my friends and we went to Ladakh. As soon as we reached Ladakh, the complete vision got altered. We used to see things with a tele lens and from tally, it got converted into a wide landscape. So after this trip, I could not resist myself to going to that place again and again. That place kept me calling there. I started visiting this place at least twice a year. But now, every time, with every visit to this place, I started observing different things. Sometimes I used to go and observe architectural beauty of this place. Sometimes the people, the culture, the festivals sometimes the landscape, sometimes the night vision of this area and sometimes just the birds and animals. And I started my research to come up with a profitable book on Ladakh and its places. As soon as I started my research, I got to know that there is a very integral part of Ladakh which I cannot miss and that was the world's most elusive cat, Snow Leopard. And that's how I made myself convinced that I should venture into a snow leopard expedition and I started preparing. We landed into the world's highest airport of Leh in peak winters of February 2016 with all our enthusiasm to capture the world's most elusive cat. We were quite content. We had no idea that what kind of location it will be. We had no idea that what kind of you know problems that we are going to face into this into this climatic conditions. But we were there. We started our camping from chilling in Hamish National Park, and we spent almost 12 days into the extreme conditions where night temperature used to be minus 30 degrees and daytime temperature used to be minus 5 to minus 10 degrees. The wind chill was killing us and there was no hint of this cat. We kept on searching here and there. But we were not, we were not completely, completely exhausted because we always had an idea of in our mind that okay, if we'll get a if we'll get a snow leopard, we'll capture like this and that. But we could not see the tail of the cat. We could not see the snow leopard during our expedition. It was not a complete failure. We achieved a hell lot of experience to plan our next trip to Ule Valley in 2018 February. We contacted one of the best guide, Norbu, who was a guide to National Geographic team when they filmed the first ever Himalayan snow leopards. We were all prepared mentally and physically. And we tried again in 2018 February winter for more than 20 days in Ule Valley in search of the ghost cat of Himalayas. But you know what? This year was also not for us. We came empty handed with not a single image of snow leopard. One of my friends called me and asked me about the situation in Ule Valley and I said, no, there are no chances in Ule Valley. I don't think so you're going to get a snow leopard there. He said, okay, let me try his luck. And before I reached my hometown, he gave me a call from Ule that he got to see the snow leopard and I said I'm going to delete your number please do not call me again a lot of friends started asking me about snow leopard and I said no I was not lucky enough but it happens it's nature we have to take what we get so already after two 
unsuccessful attempts of capturing the ghost cat of Himalayas, somebody wanted to put a trust on me and I was offered a trip to Spiti Valley to capture the snow leopard along with the troop. That was nature wonders. I was given a call and they said that can you go to this place and I was why not? I want to capture this beauty. And we planned a trip to Spiti Valley in February in 2019 once again. But this time everything was going to be different. Because the place was different. Spiti Valley is more difficult compared to Ule and Hamish National Park. So we were over prepared probably. And we planned this trip and we reached to Spiti Valley in 2019. I remember preparing myself physically and mentally both. I was like, what if I won't be able to walk into this difficult climatic condition? I was thinking that what if I won't be able to get a snow leopard once again? So this time we started from Chandigarh. We started from Chandigarh and the actual plan was Chandigarh, Rampura, Tabo and Kimba. As soon as we reached Rampura, we got a news that the roads to Spiti are closed due to an extreme avalanche. I was like, what are we supposed to do here in Dampara? And they said, sir, all you can do is wait. So we waited for more than three days in Dampara, absolutely doing nothing. After three days, we got a call from a bus driver. They said, sir, you can start your journey because the roads are clear up now. And we started our journey from Dampara to Tabo. As soon as we reached Tabo, the climatic condition were worst. The snowfall was there. A lot of snow on the roads, we are not able to see the clear roads. But then we had to shift from tempo travelers to 4x4 gypsies. We shifted all our luggage, everything in, in the evening. We started from Tabo to one of the highest villages on this planet, which is Kibar. And we reached there in the middle of the night. It was extremely cold. We had no clue what kind of area it is. We were just walking into the dark and we reached to our homestay. And we, and we tried to settle out there in these extreme cold winter nights. We had a sleepless night. And as soon as we woke up next morning, the view from my window was stunning. I could see the snow-covered village absolutely in the palm of the Himalayas. There are a lot of small houses with the chimneys and smoke coming out of them. And I was stunned with the views and the visuals from my window. I wanted to go there. But then we were supposed to acclimatize for the We cannot go out on a very first day and start shooting. So we are supposed to stay in our home state because at that particular altitude, if we not follow certain procedures to get acclimatized, you can get into the problems, physical problems, mental problems because there is something called altitude sickness. If you, if you are caught up by altitude sickness, all your trips, all your days will be ruined like that. So we decided to stay in our homestays to get acclimatized and we are supposed to go out next day to search for the snow. You know what happened? In the afternoon, there was a small device which we call walkie talkie. It was there in our room and somebody was calling the, to our homestay that Shin, Shin, please come, Shin, Shin. I was like, Shin, is, is he talking about snow leopard? And he said, yes sir, he's talking about snow leopard. They have seen a snow leopard eating an ibex, but sir, we should not go there because you're not acclimatized properly. And I was like, forget about everything. I want to see my first snow leopard. It's been three years. And I was, I was, I was, I could not stop myself from going there. I was ready to get into any other problems, but I wanted to see the snow level. I just had no idea in my mind. I asked my crew members, let's go to that place. I want to see the snow leopard. We packed all of our cameras and started walking towards the place we were guided by the guides who were spotting the snow leopards. We reached there. We reached to that place and we, we settled our cameras and asked, where is snow leopard, where is snow leopard? And he was like, sir, there it is. Can you see moving, it, it is eating an ibex. And he was like, no, we cannot see it. Because the scale, we were not able to understand the scale of the entire place because it's such a huge place where you have to find a very small mammal from a 500 meter distance. And I was like, shit man, it is completely different from what I was thinking. Not able to locate the snow leopard at all. 
but after almost half an hour of struggle snow leopard moved from the place where it was eating an ibex and we could actually see it moving in the snow i remember because i was watching my first snow leopard after 3 years of exhaustive journeys into this place i remember i had a goosebumps when i saw it for the first time i could i was not able to believe that i was watching a snow leopard in spiti valley you know after 3 years i don't know i cannot put it in complete words what it feels when you have been searching for something for 3 years and you can now seeing it on a very first day when you have reached there we it was almost evening it was as soon as it gets evening in spiti it is very difficult to stay out there in the in, into the, on the cliffs so we turned back with a joy we wanted to celebrate you know we, we were all i was i was just giving hugs to all my crew members are thank you yaar thank you yaar you have given me the first snow leopard of my life i was overjoyed i was running out of words to thank you of them the next day morning we again went to the same place the snow leopard was into the same thing it was eating an ibex or either sleeping so we kept on clipping the same kind of image sometimes there was a snowfall sometimes we were just waiting snow leopard to wake up you know after maybe 4 hours 5 hours the all all the movement that we could see was like snow leopard was eating ibex ibex sitting in a place and sleeping again so eat sleep and shit is the only thing we were observing you know what for more than 5 days we were observing the same thing now the enthusiasm was on a rest because we were watching the same thing for more than 5 days everybody decided to go back to the homestay because now there was nothing new for four, more than 5 days and nobody wanted to you know get into this extreme cold every day sitting and waiting for something to happen with the same snow leopard so everybody went back to the homestay but me and couple of my friends we decided to stay back because you know when you get something after such a long time you want to have the last sip of it and snow leopard that day after everybody left started moving from that place we could not believe it was going up onto the cliffs it was passing through the frozen waterfalls it was coming back into the valley going up onto the ridges and finally after half an hour it disappeared into the valley into the spiti river now we had no visuals of snow leopard and our guide was also very happy that sir you have got the best shot but i said no i have still not got a best shot because i quote myself as a fine art nature photographer i was not happy with the documentation of snow leopard i wanted a beauty against reality so i wanted to portray this animal into this complete habitat with a very different perspective and i said no man i'm still not happy i wanted a different perspective i wanted a different setup can you tell me where it has gone but it was somewhere else he said sir we can go to chicham bridge if we can get his usuals and he started walking to the chicham bridge we went to the chicham bridge i was very happy seeing the overall landscape because that is asia's one of the highest vent bridge when we reached there we were just casually taking a look near the near the spiti valley and finally it moved the tail and the complete setup was made for us only only two three photographers on chicham bridge and we were watching a male snow leopard sitting on an iceberg in spiti river as if it was set up as if it was a studio setup we were very happy and i wanted to capture the landscape with an animal i i i told myself that remember your first trip to ladakh that you want to capture an animal with the landscape as if it's a part of this place as if it's a part of this terrain and i've got one of my best shot of snow leopard on the fifth day evening but the trip didn't end there next day we started again searching for the same snow leopard but they said that sir this snow leopard have moved to the higher altitude are you ready to go there i said i'm ready to climb a mount everest if i'm getting a snow leopard nicely and we started walking to the area called gete we were walking and we were trying to find the footprints and tail marks and and scat or whatever we can find to get a hint of that male snow leopard while searching for the same male snow leopard we got to see the hint of more than one snow leopard into the markings of snow my guide asked me sir there are more than two snow leopards like really there are more than two snow leopards sir yes there are more than two snow leopards i have decided to camp out there 
and we started searching and scanning the whole valley, the whole cliff and the whole mountain. We remember we started scanning that place at 11 a.m. and at 5 p.m. after six hours, my guide called me, sir, 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 there are three snow leopards. And I was like, what, seriously, are you, are you kidding me? And I said, no, no, sir, there are three snow leopards. And I just, I, I just shifted my camera on that particular ridge and I focused where he was scanning the ridge and I could see two cubs with a female. As soon as we reached that place, the scenario was very beautiful. The female was sleeping in an open snow patch and both the cubs were inside the cave. So sometimes they are coming out of the cave, they are getting scared of us, they are getting back into the caves. Female used to come back and you know, they, it, it used to receive both the cubs, they used to go along with the female, all those activities. Were, and you know what? Best part was, the best part of that day was the light. It was a brilliant sunny day where we could capture that yellow fur of the female walking into the snow, walking under the rocks with both the cubs following the female. It was absolutely brilliant. We spent the whole day capturing the beautiful moments of female and the cubs. Every day we were following either the male snow leopard or the female and these two cubs. Every single day we were able to spot a snow leopard in this beautiful place. This became our own game drive. For us, now seeing a snow leopard became just another thing in Speedy Valley. And sometimes we used to leave that place to capture other mammals because we knew that these snow leopards are going to be there. So sometimes we used to go to capture ibex or desert fox or you know some other birds you know like golden golden eagle, the lammer gear. So we were leaving that area where the snow leopards are sleeping and you know going back to the same place when the light is good. We were that confident about this place. You know we have a saying in Hindi that jab deta hai, upar wala to chappar far ke deta hai. It was something like that that we were watching them. Sometimes we see this female and cubs in the morning and the male snow leopard in the evening. I remember then after probably 15th or 16th day, we got a news that there is a snow leopard on this side of the ridge. And I was like, yes, this is, the, this is going to be the chance where I can make my kind of images and not just the portrait or the documentary shoot of this place. We went to this place. But there was no hint of the snow leopard. But guide said that, sir, I have seen him going inside the cave. That day, all of the photographers coming from other companies and different countries, they decided to sit, set themselves in a different light conditions. But I decided to go in another direction to get my kind of images because I wanted to make different images. I just did not want a photocopy of what everybody else were doing. So I changed my lines, I, I removed my tele lens and I, I, I was there with just 400 millimeter focal length. And I was in another direction, completely another direction. That day I could capture some of the most beautiful images of snow leopard that, I, that are, those images are very close to my heart. And I remember one of the images posting on internet and became viral. It became one of the most viewed image on internet. And everybody started reposting those images. And I've got more than 50, 60,000 reposts of my tweet and Instagram profile. And every, it was everywhere. Even if today, if you want to search, you just find the art of camouflage and you'll find this image everywhere. So, you know, sometimes Sometimes capturing the essence of that place with a different perspective can give you an unexpected results. So everybody could capture just the portrait of snow leopard, but I could capture the whole landscape of snow leopard and it got viral on the internet. Now when I already have good images of snow leopard and look back into the past and the whole process that I had gone through to capture the snow leopard, I think it is not just about one particular cat or the species. It's about the whole experience. 